Hey everyone, it's Nathan. Welcome to Hail. So it's time for another wrapped episode. I'm really excited about this one. I watched some great movies in November, so without further ado, let's get right into the lineup. I started the month off with watching Mass, a new 2021 release. Everyone does well on it, but Anne Dowd really was the standout to me. Then for movie night, it was my roommate's turn to pick, and we watched the remake of The Blob, the 80s version, and I actually like this one more than the 50s version. Despite that being a Criterion edition and everything, I just had more fun with the 80s one. November is notorious for being noir event amongst classic film fans and I participated. I wanted to try to watch at least eight noir movies. I ended up watching nine. The first one was called I Am a Fugitive from a Chain Gang. My friend Jackson recommended this movie and he told me that it's kind of like the 1930s version of Shawshank Redemption where a man is accused of something he didn't do and he's sentenced to prison for it. It also just feels ahead of its time in a lot of ways, especially for a 1930s movie. I was very impressed by some scenes in this movie. There was one shot in particular where a prison mate is getting whipped for some trouble that he has caused and the shot you hear the whipping happening in the background but you don't see it happening you just have a camera panning down this aisle of cellmates sitting down in their bed listening to the whipping as they're going to bed and it was just really powerful I then watched Eternals and I liked it more than other people but I think that I, I liked it more the night of watching it. Looking back on it now, it's definitely gone down. I think I'm just not as big of a fan of Marvel movies as I used to be. As part of my 25 movie challenge and Noir Vember, I checked out No Way Out, a movie that was on the Criterion channel in November, and it was one of my favorite watches of the entire month. Starring Sidney Poitier, it's about an African-American doctor who operates on a white man. It's a story of racism. It actually really reminded me of West Side Story, just without the music, of course. Fun fact, it's Sidney Poitier's first starring role, first movie for that matter, and he is still just so good. He's good in anything that he does. Continuing my 25 movie challenge, I checked out Stromboli, and it just wasn't for me. I thought it was very boring. I wasn't a fan of any of the characters, really, and I didn't have a good time with it. I understand that this is a very niche type of genre of film, and some people really dig it. Maybe I watched it on a bad night or something, because I just couldn't get into it. Once again, it was roommate's turn to pick the movie. We watched The Cave. It's a really bad horror movie from the 2000s, and yeah, it was absolute garbage. I didn't like anything about it. I thought the acting was horrible. I didn't think it came anywhere close to being as good as The Descent, a movie that I watched in October for Halloween. I can't even say it was disappointing because I didn't go into it with high expectations. I pretty much went into it expecting a bad movie, and that's exactly what I got. So I guess it met my expectations for that matter. The Maltese Falcon was such a fun movie to watch for Noir Vember. Humphrey Bogart was great, but also the supporting cast, including Sydney Greenstreet, was also just really great. It's a movie that requires your full attention. It's not one that you can just passively watch because so many names are being thrown back and forth throughout the entire runtime and more and more elements are added into the movie as the story unfolds and so it's really just something that you need to be attentive to when you're watching and I think if you are that attentive then you will have a great experience from this one. On November 12th I saw Tick Tick Boom in theaters with my buddy Nick and this was a movie that on a first watch I'll say right now I've seen it twice now but on a first watch it was a 9 out of 10 on a rewatch, it became perfect in my eyes. Andrew Garfield is currently my pick for best actor. I also just love the story of following your dreams. I love that whole message of actions speak so much louder than your words. That meant so much. It's currently in competition for my favorite movie of the year. I can't decide between Tick, Tick, Boom, and Dune. It's a very neck and neck tie. I've seen both of the movies twice. I won't be able to have an answer until I release my top 10 of 2021. Passing was a new movie that came out on Netflix in November, and it was a very simple, quiet, and subtle movie that I actually really enjoyed. The story just really gets you thinking about how sad it is that some people live their lives like that. It was really well done. I think that everyone does a good job here, and I like that the cinematography is in black and white. Intermezzo was my fourth watch from Ingrid Bergman for my 25 movie challenge, and this was actually one of my favorite ones I've seen of her for this challenge. The movie is in Swedish, and so she isn't speaking English at all throughout the movie. It's about her having an affair with a musician, and it's actually a pretty sad movie to be completely honest but I think that Ingrid Bergman really does well in this movie she's also more beautiful than ever for her being so young I was just really impressed with how well she did I watched a long time coming criterion that I own called Tokyo Story the father in this movie the older man I didn't like his performance at all he just always seemed very oblivious to me whether he was happy or sad I, I never felt like I could connect to him because it always felt like he was just 
you know, just like kind of there staring off into the distance. It just didn't resonate with me like other movies have of similar plots. Like for an example, the movie Make Way for Tomorrow was very similar to Tokyo Story and I just enjoyed Make Way for Tomorrow a lot more. Belfast is getting so much Oscar buzz for the best picture pick and I don't even think it should be nominated. I don't know. It just was really boring. I didn't feel connected to any of the cast members. Uh, really the only scenes that I enjoyed were anything that involved this young boy going to some sort of fine arts production, whether it was a play or a movie at the theater. I rewatched Jurassic Park, The Lost World for the first time and I don't even know how many years. In fact, the only thing I remembered from this movie was that there was a scene where Jeff Goldblum's daughter does them gymnastics and takes out of a lost raptor. And yeah, that's that pretty much just sums up the movie. Of course, it's the month of Thanksgiving. I rewatched Planes, Trains, and Automobiles. This is the third year in a row that I've watched this movie. And at this point, I doubt that I'll ever miss a year for who knows how far into the future. John Candy is my favorite. I also love Steve Martin, but John Candy really is my standout for this one. I love his character. I love his performance. I love his character's background. I, I love hearing his laugh. Just so many things I love about this movie. And it's interesting because John Candy in real life passed away before I was ever even born. And yet I feel so connected to him. And when I watch the movie, I feel so sad to think that he died at such a young age. This movie kind of led me down a wormhole on YouTube where I watched news reports of his passing, announcing that he had died. And I also watched video essays on how great of an actor John Candy was and how many people loved him. And I'm not gonna lie, I got pretty emotional. I was never even alive during this guy's career, but I feel so connected to him in movies like Planes, Trains, and Automobiles, as well as Uncle Buck, and even the small cameo he has in Home Alone. I just love this actor, and he's amongst my top 10 favorite actors of all time. Okay, I'm done with my little John Candy speech. Let's move on to the next movie. I actually, I just looked at my list of movies that I watched and I want to keep talking about John Candy now because I realized the next one I have to talk about is Home Sweet Home Alone, which was such a garbage packed movie. It was offensive to me. The fact that they used John Williams of original score in this awful movie hurt my heart so much. I watched it with a group of friends and when the movie ended, some of the friends were like, all right, like I like this part of it. And, but like, I couldn't think of one thing I liked about it, so let's just move on. I watched Laura and really enjoyed it, especially a twist that happens in the movie about, I think it was about halfway through. I honestly wasn't expecting and I really liked it. The story went into a direction that I didn't see coming and I enjoyed it. Continuing my noir watch, I checked out The Sweet Smell of Success, which also is in competition with No Way Out as my favorite noir and favorite movie of the month because this movie was just amazing. The first 45 minutes are a night on the town. You see all these problems in the city and you see the situations that this press agent gets himself into. And then the second half of the movie is devoted to the daytime, the day after that night in the city and basically paying for the problems that started the night before. I love the dialogue. One of the best written movies I've ever seen in my life. It was just that good. Very impressive screenplay. All the performances are great. I think this is the best I've seen Tony Curtis in. I then checked out King Richard, another 2021 release and I enjoyed it. I thought it would be more about Serena Williams, but I kind of liked that the spotlight was on Venus Williams. Williams. I thought that was kind of a cool surprise. Will Smith is a lot of people's front runner for best actor this year. I do think he definitely will get a nomination and he probably will win. But as far as my personal picks go, I'm still rooting for Andrew Garfield. Mildred Pierce was actually a movie I picked up in this month's Criterion sale and I watched it the night of picking it up and I was not disappointed. The reason Mildred Pierce stands out above other noirs and Criterions for that matter is because it is a completely female led movie. I feel like the females are normally the supporting romantic interests. So it was really refreshing seeing Mildred Pierce where she's such an independent woman and you just see the struggles that she goes through. Another interesting aspect of this movie is it really switches between being a noir movie to a drama back to a noir and that's the whole entire movie. My roommate and I rewatched the whole entire Indiana Jones series including Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. I will be talking about them in my Steven Spielberg video coming up later this month. Then I watched one of my most anticipated noir movies of the month that was The Treasure of the Sierra Madre. One of my friends on Instagram uh, told me after the fact that this was one of the characters that inspired George Lucas and Steven Spielberg for Indiana Jones. And so it was kind of fitting that I obliviously watched the Indiana Jones series 
and then this movie. I can see where the inspiration comes from. Although I will say Humphrey Bogart's character is definitely more rough around the edges than Indiana Jones, but I, I still see that comparison. There's a lot of foreshadowing. I can't talk about it because it will spoil the movie, but there's different things that happen at the beginning of the movie. And even when they happen, I was like, that that's going to play a role later on. And sure enough, it did. But I was so satisfied. It wasn't one of those predictions where I was like, all right, I saw that coming. But it was one of those predictions where you're like, yes, I'm glad they went in that direction. I don't want to say too much more. I just want you guys, if you haven't seen this movie, to go into it just expecting a solid movie with Humphrey Bogart and treasure hunting. And I think you will be satisfied. Before the month ended, I did check out The Shop Around the Corner, which was a rewatch. I love the setting. I love the snow. I love the subtle Christmas subgenre of it. I mean, you never see anyone actually celebrate Christmas, but they wish each other a Merry Christmas. You see the Christmas trees, you see the snow, and it just feels like that wonderful time of the year. One person that I don't talk about a lot is Frank Morgan. He is known for his role as the Wizard of Oz, but I also love him in this movie and in another movie with James Stewart and Margaret Sullivan called The Mortal Storm, which I talked your ear off on this channel about. I like him as a supporting actor and I want to see more of him. And I ended the month with two noir movies. First off, it was Ride the Pink Horse, which was a criterion I bought, I think in the summer sale. And I bought this movie for two reasons. Robert Montgomery is an actor that I've grown to really like. I enjoyed him in Here Comes Mr. Jordan and I enjoyed him even more in Mr. and Mrs. Smith. And so I wanted to see him in this movie. And then also Thomas Gomez is an actor from two episodes of The Twilight Zone and both episodes he's featured in, he gives the best performance performance of anyone in the episodes, in my opinion. So I just wanted to see more. Both actors satisfied me enough. I will say that Robert Montgomery's performance wasn't as good as I wanted it to be. And I think that's mostly because I've only seen him in comedic roles. And this, he plays a very serious person who's trying to avenge his friend's death. He's trying to blackmail this very rich man. And he, there's no room for any comedy. And that's totally fine. But I guess what I'm trying to say is I like him more in a comedic element than in a serious role. Thomas Gomez, however, killed it for me. I loved his performance as Poncho. There's one scene particularly where he's sticking up for uh, his friend in this movie, Robert Montgomery's character, and it's just a really emotional scene. This is a movie I would recommend if you're looking for a criterion. It's just enjoyable. It's a good noir, and it takes place in a Mexican city, which is refreshing from being taken off the LA streets or New York streets. It's just cool seeing noir in different settings. Finally, I ended the month with a Frank Borzaghi movie that I'd been wanting to see for a long time. That was Moonrise. Of the three Borzaghi movies I've seen, the Mortal Storm, History Has Made at Night, and Moonrise. This one is my least favorite. However, there are still some great things to appreciate, especially the opening shot. It shows a sequence of a man being hung, and that transition from being hung to showing this main character as a baby is amazing. If you've seen the movie, you know what I'm talking about. There's also some cool sequences involving driving fast in a heavy rainstorm. I think the movie just didn't work as well for me because I didn't love the performance by the main actor. And in addition to that, it was just kind of boring. I appreciated, I think, the filming aspect of it more than anything else. As far as books goes, the only book that I read was a book that's for my major in grad school. It's called On the Mend, and it's talking about how to improve operations in a healthcare facility. So I know you guys don't care about that at all, so I'm just going to skip over that. TV shows, I've been getting really, really into Survivor. I'm loving this current season, season 41. I had my friends recommend some seasons that they've seen. They're like super fans, and I've been watching some of those seasons. And so in the month of November, I watched season six, The Amazon, seven at Pearl Islands. And then before I watched season eight, All Stars, I want to kind of backtrack, watch some older seasons. So I checked out season one. I'm currently on season two, and I'm also currently watching season 37 too. I have been enjoying that very much. It's great to see older Survivor and see what the show was like back in the day. Very weird too, and not as entertaining, but still entertaining enough, especially season six and seven. Season one was hard to get through, but it was enjoyable to watch still because it was the first one ever made. And then before I wrap this video up, I just want to show two more criterions I picked up before the sale ended. It's a mad, 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 mad world, or as my friends and I like to say it's a match of the fourth power world. So the next movie we'll be watching is also part of the original criteria for the 24 hour movie marathon and that is a classic that you've always wanted to see but you never have seen. The movie is... It's a mad to the fourth power world. I've seen It's a Mad to the Fourth Power World once. It was in high school and I really, really enjoyed it. What would you give it out of 10? Um, 8.5. Probably 8. Yeah, probably right around there. I was actually going to say 8.5. So 8.5 out of 10 all around. Enjoy the movie. It was funny. So 
Yeah. And then I picked up They Live By Night, which was a movie that grabbed my attention for a few reasons. One, it has a little bit of Christmas in it. I know that. And it's December, so I want to watch it during this month. But I know it's not known as a Christmas movie. It also stars Farley Granger, who is in Strangers on a Train and... Rope, two Alfred Hitchcock movies I really, really like, and I like his performance in both of those movies. In addition to that, it's directed by Nicholas Ray, who has only been good for me so far. He directed Rebel Without a Cause and In a Lonely Place, two movies I really enjoy. And so we'll see if he can keep up the streak with this one. I'm excited to watch it. I don't have too many life updates, so I'm just going to wrap it up, guys. Let me know what movies you watch, what TV shows you're into right now. November was awesome. Let's finish this year out strong. Thank you guys for watching. Have a great day.